Welcome back to the Tech Talks Daily Podcast. Now, the modern workforce demands purpose to their work at all levels of the organisation. And with workers spending a third of their life at work, an individual's career can often be the most rewarding outlet. But each day, 67% of employees report feeling disengaged at work, and 96% of executives feel burnt out. And 57% feel stressed daily. There needs to, we need a different approach, is what I'm trying to say. So when I come across a company called Go Beyond, who are going beyond to improve, who are improving retention, increasing productivity, and trying to decrease burnout, I wanted to find out more about how they're combining behavioural science and technology to build the workforce of the future and build it on purpose. So buckle up and hold on tight, because today I'm going to introduce you all to Greg Sloan from Go Beyond, who we're going to talk about behavioural science and technology, and how they're combining the two to create a more prosperous workforce. So buckle up and hold on tight, because I'm going to beam your ears all the way to Atlanta, Georgia, where Greg is waiting to speak with us today. So a massive warm welcome to the show. Can you tell the listeners a little about who you are and what you do? Good morning, Neil. Thanks for having me. I guess it's morning here in Atlanta and afternoon uh, where you are. But uh, my name is Greg Sloan. I am the co-founder of Go Beyond. We're a software platform. Uh, we create tools and content to improve well-being in the workplace, to improve recruiting and retention of your best workers. And I'm looking forward to finding out more about that in a moment. But there's a bit of a tradition on this podcast where sure. I always begin by taking the guests back in time. So sure. can, can you remember where your passion for tech came from or something that happened, a big pivotal moment in your career that put you on this path that you're on today? Or or should I say, what is your origin story and, and how did you find your purpose? Yeah, so, well, let's let's focus on the tech for a moment. So I, I was born in the late 60s, so I grew up in that era where I was in high school where technology and personal computer, I guess computers were just crossing into the the uh, realm of personal computers. And uh, I remember one of my high school projects, I had to actually complete a very, very simple programming project. It was, you know, answer a bunch of random questions and it drew a little multicolored sword. Uh, you know, that was a... a, a, a high schoolers (laughs) idea of writing software, but that was sort of my first um, introduction into technology. And at the time, you know, really didn't know where it was going to go through college. um, I was a finance major. So my favorite software was Quicken, you know, managing a personal budget, pretty Mm -hmm. geeky. You know, it probably wasn't until a little later in my career that I moved away from being just a user of technology to someone who could see, uh, a personal um, story and integration as a founder or somebody who who creates technology as part of my entrepreneurial experience. But um, yeah, that's a little bit of how I got into technology. Um, with respect to my personal, uh, you know, purpose and career path, I spent 25 years in financial services, uh, including working for one of the largest brands in the world. And in my mid 30s, I really found myself at the peak of what Maslow would call self-actualization, but, you know, making the right amount of money, driving the right car, having the right business card, living in the big house. And I just, I wasn't as fulfilled as I wanted to be. And so I went through this process of really figuring out like, why am I here? What is my unique gift to the world? How am I going to make a difference? Uh, Things of that. And that's what happened in my mid thirties and uh, started my, what what we call my purpose journey. I love that. And I want to find out more about that. So that path led you to Go Beyond. So can you tell me more about what Go Beyond is, how you're helping other people discover and integrate their purpose through technology? So it still comes back. It's got to, uh, I got to share a little bit about how it came about. So yeah. this was my experience that I went through in 2006. Um, I was working at Goldman Sachs at the time and eventually led me to to pivot away and launch my own wealth management firm, obviously right before the crisis, the financial crisis and great recession. But what I found was most of my clients were pretty wealthy individuals. They had already achieved financial success, but many of them said the same thing to me about their life, which was, you know, something is missing in my life. And so in 2009, 2010, I started to integrate 
the discussion of purpose into my wealth management client relationship. In fact, I still remember the first client that I said, look, I've got this thing that I've gone through a process to help you really create a purpose of your wealth, a a definition of purpose of your wealth, as opposed to just personal financial goals. And uh, I just caught, uh, heard a uh, recent um, update on that particular client and he's just living this best life now. But the bottom line was I really started to integrate the idea of purpose into a relational uh, experience with my clients. And then a few years later, uh, my son, who was in uh, high school at the time, said, you know, dad, you're, you have this process that could be built into technology. So that was the beginning of what is now Go Beyond. And we've been working on uh, sort of the iterations of that over the years. And what we found is that it really does have the ability to help particular uh, people in the workplace and companies to improve retention and recruiting and uh, employee engagement, sort of defeat all this quiet quitting and great resignation that we're talking about. And it really is a big trend at the moment. So many people talking about it. And I'm curious to set the scene for today's conversation. Sure. What, what actually comes first, identity or purpose? You know, this is, a, 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 I was a finance guy, right? All yeah. this psychology and this right brain stuff, emotional stuff. I just didn't really feel early in my career. There was a lot of value behind it. In fact, I remember going through my psychology courses thinking this is just, I have to get through this just to graduate. But um, when I started to hire my own employees um, and really try to build a practice, build a firm, I really understood that I uh, I needed to understand who my people were, like what was their origin story? You started with what's the origin story? So I think of that origin story as your sort of your identity. Where'd you come from? What is all that, um, the DNA and, and the strengths and weakness, your core aptitudes. So I think of that as sort of your identity. And once you understand that, and you, you can help people really know more about who they are, then you can say, okay, now you know who you are. Now is understand what's your purpose. What is the best definition of the best version of yourself, which uh, becomes your personal purpose? So, that you know, identity definitely comes first. I love that. And just to bring this topic to life a little for people listening, do you have any examples of, of how you're helping other people through technology mediums just to, so people can understand how this might work in their world too? Yeah. Again, what I was doing was personal one-on-one, not very scalable. I think I took, um, you know, 30, 40 folks through this in the, in the, between probably 2010, 2015. And what we learned was this process was repeatable. And so when we built the original beta and we started working with, I, I started selling it to small businesses, basically 20, 30, 40 employees. And some of these owners that said, you know, I really want to make sure my people, my employees recognize that I'm, I value them more than just the job they can produce. I really want to help them live their best life. And so the, the, the content is being um, adopted and executed through a web application. And so what we give you an example of a current customer that we're working with, a small medical practice, and we're leading his um employees, his, his staff through a program, um, which includes video. We now have video content in addition to the soft software, which are self-guided exercises. And uh, this is a particular company that is really struggling with uh, retention. And so we're, we're helping his employees really understand who they are, their identity, their purpose, really understand how they bring that into the workplace. And the outcome, of course, is he really wants to grow his business and triple the size of his employee base, but he's got to make sure he retains the existing ones as he grows his business. So that's a that's a great example. Uh, sometimes we just work with teams as opposed to the entire company. Worked with a pretty large company earlier this year where we just had one small team and the team leader said, I want to build better um, relationships within my team and really want to understand how to craft their jobs based on where they see themselves contributing best, which I think uh, is what you describe as purpose. So that's, that's two examples of kind of where we're working with folks. 
Awesome. And I'm not sure uh, if the Earth is spinning faster on its axis or I'm just getting old. But once again, we're approaching that time of the year where we're all starting to think about goals for a new year. But they're, right. for, the, for the most part, many people, it's their own self-belief that often holds them back from implementing meaningful change, which is why two weeks into January, they're back to their old self again. But how can those people discover and integrate purpose in their lives and, and ultimately stop getting in their own way? Boy, that that last comment of stop getting their own way is yeah. really what I witness over and over again. And when you think about purpose, um, there's a there's a PhD in Chicago, Dr. Judith Wright, and she describes purpose as sort of a flight plan, like an air, airplane takes. A flight plan is sort of uh, a purpose is sort of a flight plan for your life, and it's this it's this direct line. However, a plane is moved around by wind and and weather and all these other things that affect the flight plan and the same analogy works with our life you know you got to have that flight plan you, you as, as stephen covey described you have to have a true north to know where you're headed and for many individuals they they kind of feel like they have something but they they haven't been able to articulate it we're big believers in words and so when we our software helps individuals actually draft a personal purpose statement, very short, just like a company would draft a mission statement. And that is what we believe is the center of how you make these meaningful changes, uh, very similar to structuring goals for yourself. We think goals should be aligned with purpose and definitely your career path should be aligned with your purpose. And so, you know, it all comes down to really being intentional about saying, yeah, this is what I believe when I, I'm, you know, when I'm dead and gone, others can say that, uh, you know, Neil, Greg, they really accomplished their purpose. They really left their mark. They really, we know that they were here. So it, it all starts with really um, doing those self, um, self-reflection self exercises. Today's episode is brought to you by our friends at Nextiva, helping you engage with your customers and your team in a single app. Now, you might recall Nextiva from episode 1875, where I had a great conversation with Thomas Gorney, Nextiva's co-founder and CEO. Now, Thomas shared how he came to America as a Polish immigrant and college dropout who didn't speak a word of English. But Gorney soon built several market-defining companies before starting Nextiva. And Nextiva brings customer and team conversations into a single screen. So with Nextiva, you'll call, text, chat, video meet, and more. But the really special thing is you'll see the entire conversation history all in a single thread. So now, when a customer contacts you, you'll know their whole story. You can say the right thing right now. So get one app to manage your customer and team conversations by simply visiting nextiva.com slash techtalkdaily. And we've talked about the value this brings to individuals, but for business leaders listening, what what would you say the ROI is of bringing purpose into the workplace? So there's a lot of studies, and I'm going to refer to McKinsey's studies that they've spent a lot of time and energy on over the last few years. So I'm going to give you three, and then I'll tell you a little bit of a story. But um, what they found is that workers that really – believe they are living their purpose at work are six times more likely to stay. The big problem that organizations are facing today, two big problems are recruiting and retention, but um, retention is probably the biggest ROI. And in addition to six times more likely to stay, they're also 600% more likely to report resilience in the workplace. Obviously we've gone through this great pandemic uh, and, and, We need employees, we need workers to have this sense of resilience. And then what I think is the best KPI metric is, um, Gallup has done some studies on this as well, but they're 150% more likely to go above and beyond in their job. And then uh, giving an example of what that's like, uh, in 2018, even pre-pandemic, there was a study done by more than, um, by a bunch of companies that had, a total of 10,000 ideas that their employees had presented to those companies, those various companies, 
to improve customer experience. Really, you know, industry agnostic. It's just a study about what, what is a what is a purposeful employee look like? Well, these are employees that submit ideas. Well, in that study, 900 of those 10,000 ideas were awarded patents, including 25 patents authored by one security guard in a particular company. So when we think about the ROI as, as leaders, we want our people to bring their best to the workplace because the organization is only going to be as great as the people. So ultimately, we want people and workers that go above and beyond, which I think is, is just a great way to describe purposeful uh, employees. Wow, that's some great ROI right there. That's an amazing example. And if I was to ask you to look into a virtual crystal ball, since we are at that time of the year, how do you see the future of work evolving in 2023 and beyond? Well, I'm, I'm going to share something that is not going to be too surprising, but I have a little different take on it. But we, we believe the future of work is hybrid, and yeah. we don't mean remote. The number one thing that employees and workers have shared over the last few years, survey after survey, their their importance, what they really want is flexibility. They want flexibility of location, remote, workplace. They want the flexibility of schedule. Uh, And I think they also want flexibility of the roles and the projects. I remember talking to one engineer recently, a very high uh, recruit coming out of a pretty great school. He had been with this company for about three years and had this proper conversation. I said, well, how are things, how are things going with your job? And are you part of this quiet quitting and seeking uh, your next place? And he said, you know, privately, yes, I am. And I was like, why is that? He said, because I'm so bored. I'm doing the exact same thing over and over again. I said, well, do you have any side hustles? Are you doing anything on the side? He was like, no, but I thought about it. I said, well, what happens if your organization, your leader came to you and said, um, you know, Mike, we've got these, uh, we, we, you're really good at this one thing. We really need you to remain uh, an engineer in this particular area, but we've got these other projects uh, that we need some support and we need some help on. Would you be willing to or interested in kind of helping that? And this young man was like, Greg, that would be huge uh, because that is really what I'm looking for. I'm looking for a role where, I, yeah, I can I can still be valued for the thing that I do, but I also want to have some sort of hybrid um, job description. So we think the future of work is hybrid and that's going to continue where people say, I want something more than just the same thing over and over again. Absolutely love that. And what about yourself? What's next for you? What And what excites you about finding a purpose in 2023 and expanding on what you've already achieved? Well, I think the pending recession, uh, if, if we had there, it looks like we are, and the continuation of what we call the great realignment uh, will lead more companies to focus on you know, getting the right people on the bus, just Jim Collins taught us in his book, Good to Great, get them in the right seats in the bus. But it also sometimes means there includes a retrofitting of the bus or the business model. I'm working with a particular, within a particular industry, I'm not going to show that, but where I feel like the business model is bro- broken. And when we talk about, pur- my purpose is really around aligning corporate and individual and personal purpose. So this is a particular industry where, the business model, I think, needs to be updated so that it works for all stakeholders, particularly the future workforce. And really being one of those uh, thought leaders and creative um, problem solvers to say, how do we make sure more individuals are fully engaged in their career paths, in their uh, organizations that they're tied to so they can live more meaningful lives and fulfilling lives, but also so the company can do more uh, to change this world for the better. Um, as, as we now know, you know, corporations are really recognize their need to be, um, to have purpose for themselves beyond just a corporate mission that supports shareholders. This is one that really changes and does good for the world. Tom Shoes, Patagonia, there's so many other companies that if UPS even now has a corporate purpose statement. So I'm really excited about helping organizations uh, and individuals 
activate purpose and align the purpose um, with, each, with each other. We've already shared your insights with us there, and along with your powerful story. But I'm going to ask you to leave us with one more thing before you go, and that is a song that maybe inspired you that we can add to our Spotify playlist, or a book that means something to you that we can add to an Amazon wish list. All I ask is, what are you going to leave us with, and why? Well, I, I don't know about inspiring song, but I'm going to tell you one of my favorite songs. It's an old song from the 70s. It was written in the 60s, originally recorded by a gentleman named B.J. Thomas. It's called Hooked on a Feeling. But then it was re- re-recorded by Blue Sway, this uh, Swedish band. Uh, you, you remember? You may remember the the, uh, the Uga Chaka, Uga Chaka. Yes. It's just one of the most clever, clever songwritings and adaptions. So that's one of my, that's on my Spotify playlist. One of my favorite, every time I, I uh, I hear that song. It just it does something for me uh, inside because I am hooked on this feeling, you know, of really just loving life and and living a, a bigger, you know. In terms of a book, I read a book a few years ago uh, by a gentleman named Skip Richard. Yeah, not very well known uh, book, but he, he's a pretty uh, a successful guy in the literary space. But he wrote a book called The Book of Mistakes, and you know, just the title itself grabbed me and then i i dug into it and really talks about these nine mistakes it's a, it's a little bit of a uh allegory book on on the mistakes that you can make in your career path um i'm gonna leave readers with that and uh, that teaser fascinating fascinating book the book of mistakes by uh, skip Pitcher. Awesome. Well, I'll get that book added to the wish list. And of course, the song. I want a cracker of a tune there to the Spotify playlist. In fact, just as you said it, I could, I can even hear Stephen Wright introducing it in uh, the film Reservoir Dogs there as the DJ. Yeah, but, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Yes. Oh, <laughs> So thank you so much for sharing your story, your insights, leaving us with a great book and a great song. Thank you so much. Hopefully next time I'm in uh, Atlanta, Georgia, we can hook up and I can buy a a beer as a little thank you. But thanks so much for sharing it with me today. There's a great uh, wannabe British pub right around the corner from my house. We'll meet there. It's a date. (laughs) What a great guy. And I think so much of what he said will resonate with each and every one of us out there because... We all get in our own way when we want to achieve something. We get, whether it be imposter syndrome or I'm not good enough. And I read a great story recently with someone that was in awe of their mother and a mother could do just about anything that she put her hand to. And she said to her, how are you so good at everything? And she said, if you roll up your sleeves and get stuck in, Nothing in life is too difficult. And I thought that was incredible. But over to you. I'd love to hear your thoughts on everything we talked about today. Please, whether it be about the use of behavioural science and technology and creating a more prosperous workforce, or your own goals and how you're going to achieve them in 2023 and how I can support you. Email me, techblogwriteroutlook.com, Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram, at Neil C. Hughes. Let me know. And also, I'll be back again tomorrow with another guest. So thanks for listening as always. And until next time, don't be a stranger. Oh, 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 oh,